The Prophet ﷺ continued in this amazing khutbah in the 10th point that he mentioned. He said, it is a month, the beginning is mercy, its middle part is forgiveness, and its last part is freedom from hellfire. Awwaluhu rahma, wa awsatuhu maghfira, wa akhiruhu al-itku minanar. He divided this month into three parts. The first part representing the first 10 days, and the second part, the, the, the middle 10 days, and the last part, the final 10 days of the blessed month of Ramadan. And he said its first part is mercy. A time for us to seek the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is an amazing hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam called Hadith al-Rahma, the Hadith of Mercy, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhum ar-Rahmanu tabaraka wa ta'ala. Irhamu man fil ard, yarhamukum man fil sama. That those who are merciful will receive mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So show mercy to those who are on this earth. So that he who is in the heavens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will show mercy to you. And so this first part of the month of Ramadan, the first part which is mercy, it's a time for us to seek the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to receive this mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But one of the keys to receiving this mercy from Allah, for, for, for getting this mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that we show mercy to others, to everyone that we come in contact with. And so this first part of the month of Ramadan is a time for us to, to be even more merciful than we would be at any other time in the year. And use this period as a period of training so that we would continue to demonstrate and to, to manifest this rahmah and mercy in all aspects of our lives towards ourselves and towards others. So show mercy that we would receive mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This part of the month of Ramadan, awwalahu rahmah, its first part is mercy. Let us strive to receive this mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beg him for his mercy, for his rahmah. Pray to him and make constant dua for the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And show this mercy to others as well. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam then said, Awsatuhu maghfira. Its middle part is forgiveness. Its middle part is forgiveness. And so this is a, this is a period of time, the, the second 10 days of the month of Ramadan, for us to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be constant and frequent and continuous in seeking this forgiveness and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness, that so he would forgive us. And, and then, in, in, on the same token, to show forgiveness to others. Yes, to forgive others. It's a time for us to do this. And then the, the final part now, the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan, أَخِرُهُ الْعِدْكُ مِنَ النَّارِ It is freedom from hellfire. And so after doing all of the good deeds of Ramadan, fasting during the days of Ramadan, and, and remaining in qiyam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the nights of Ramadan, and then we come towards the end of the month, it's a time for us to receive this reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the great reward is freedom from hellfire. It's a time, this last third of the month of Ramadan, freedom from the fire. And it's, it's, it's a time for us to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with tears in our hearts and tears pouring from our eyes in, 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 the, in the early hours of the morning before Fajr to, to get up from our beds and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in salah, in ibadah, in recitation of Quran, in dhikr, in dua, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His rahmah, for His, for his mercy, for His maghfira, for his forgiveness and for freedom from hellfire, to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for freedom from hellfire, to be saved from the punishment of the fire of hell. This is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is what he taught the 
the Sahabas and they practice it. And, and they were the best community of believers. The Sahabas, the noble companions of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And if they can be crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness, what about us? Don't we think that we need the forgiveness of Allah more than they did? Because they are so better than us. Their, their, their dedication to Islam, their sacrifice for Islam is so great that whatever we can do doesn't compare to that. And therefore we need to be even more fervent in begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His mercy and forgiveness and especially for freedom from hellfire, which is the last part of this blessed month of Ramadan. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam continues, Anyone who helps a slave to be freed, Allah will forgive him or her and free them from hellfire. Anyone who helps a slave to be free, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will free them, from, free them from hellfire. There is this beautiful hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and they're all beautiful, in which he says, مَن نَفَّسَ عَن مُؤْمِنٍ قُرْبَةً مِن قُرْبِ الدُّنْيَا نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ Qurbatan min qurbil akhira, or kama kala alayhi salatu wa salam. That if you remove or take care of the need of a believer in this world, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of one of your need on the day of judgment. And so this freedom of people is important for us. But let's go beyond the the the, the literal meaning of this hadith of anyone who helps a slave to be freed. To look at all types of enslavement that people are subjected to. There is that actual physical slavery that exists from time to time in different countries, in different places, in different eras. But even if we live in a society where there are no slaves, but people, some people live in a situation of bondage that's perhaps even worse than physical slavery. There are many people who were, were actual slaves, but who excelled in their Islam, who became great believers in their Islam. The, the example that comes to mind immediately is that of Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu, who was an Abyssinian slave in Mecca, and he accepted Islam. And his master who was angry at him accepting Islam would punish him would torture him, on occasions would take him in the desert, in, in the hot midday sun, and put him there without any shirt on his back to lie down on the ground, and, and put hot stones on his chest to torture him so that he would renounce Islam. But even though he was a physical slave owned by someone, he had freed his mind, he had freed his heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when his master would, would torture him in this manner and tell him to renounce Islam so that he would stop his, his torturing of, of Bilal, Bilal would just say, Ahadun Ahad. Those are the words that would come from the tongue of Bilal. Even in that difficult situation of, of physical torture and persecution, he would say, Ahad, Ahad. Allah is one, reaffirming his faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was a physical slave. And so there are people who may be physical slaves, but they are free with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they believe in Allah and worship Allah. But today, there are people who may be free physically, they are not slaves, but they live a life of bondage. They live a life of slavery to their egos, to their nafs, to their desires, to the things of the dunya. And they will move away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands them to pray five times a day. But because of their slavery, their bondage to the dunya and to the things of the dunya, they don't pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They obey their nafs and their desires and the dunya. And so which is worse, that physical slave who believes in Allah and worships Allah, or that person who is free, but he misuses that freedom to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.